Hello everybody and welcome. The beginning of this project was while assessing the situation of my rack. As you can see, on the top the in air intakes were blocked by the server that was there and the fans on the back were just barely hanging with some tape and not doing much. Also, the acoustic foam to reduce the sound levels were just also hanging inside and not really doing much. So the first tasks for me were to design the cooling system of the rack. I opted for a, for a pair of Noctua fans that well, I didn't have and the third fan I already had them in my storage and it uses a different power supply so one of them was connected to the computers and another one is connected to the UPS so in case the computers turn off I still get one fan running from the UPS via USB adapter. I also needed to lift the server, so I designed this um, feet that I just glued with double-sided tape underneath the server and then put it on top of the rack. Very simple, does the job. After adding the rubber feet to the fans and then using the rubber pins to attach the fans to the rack, there is no vibration at all. And I found a 12 by 12 centimeter vacuum cleaner intake filter that I'm using to keep filter out of the rack. I just had to cut the edges to fit them properly and it's good because since I have low speed fans I don't want to be saturated with, with dust and also the fins of the heat sink of the servers are very thin so I don't want any dust anywhere. I also very poorly designed a fan holder for the Noctua fans as you can see here, one of them is different, taking uh, power from 5 volt USB and the others are connected to, the, to a power supply directly. With double-sided tape, they, stay, they stick to the rack quite nicely. And here you can see that after installing everything looks okay. And I use in the final setup a paper card dividing the front and the back of the rack so the cold air doesn't mix with the hot air. And of course, after putting everything together, I did some nice cable management, but there was no space to photograph them, so you don't see them in this video. I also designed and printed a cover for the top panel of the rack that I opened when I was installing the rack the first time and I didn't know I was not going to use it. So I just printed it a little bit tighter and it stays there with pressure. As you can see, the part is divided in the middle because my 3D printer is not large enough for the whole space, but it's working okay. These are the hard drive brackets that I removed from all service. They block a lot of the airflow, and I think this is one of the reasons why they'll put such noisy and powerful fans in the service. Here is the first server I'm doing. So this is a quick test. I set up the Y splitters that come with the Noctua fans to see if one of the fan headers could drive two fans in. Well, the, the factory server, uh, fans are so strong that for sure they could drive two, but it's good to be sure. Yeah? So here I am driving five fans out of the four headers, actually three headers that are in the motherboard. The power supply was not hard to do, just a bit annoying because of the clearances. But as you can see, everything fits inside very well, including the jacket that comes around the Noctua fan cable. I reused the jackets whenever possible just to protect the tiny, very thin fan wires. One very important thing to note is that you should really pay attention when you're screwing the fan back into the PSU because depending on the position of the screw, you may touch electric parts and basically short your PSU, so be careful. I think in this one here, I only screwed the two upper screws and left the two lower ones off. I installed a Y splitter cable from Octua in the first fan header of the CPU the right leg goes back to the chassis where it's going to be driving the 
intake fan and the left leg I'm driving around the CPU heat sink and it's well protected by the jacket and I'm gonna solder it through the back of the chassis through the holes there to drive an exhaust fan. The clearance at the front are very tight so I had to be careful to cut the wires as short as I could while leaving some space in case I made a mistake. So basically my goal was to have a very short wire but be able to redo it once if required. I also tried to have the jacket through the uh, fan hole as you can see on the bottom of the image and with this arrangement I can re easily reinstall the plastic cover that comes with the, with the server. You can see that I can easily close the plastic box and the wire is rooted next to the server without touching any electronic components. Then I designed a, some sort of holder for the exhaust fan to give enough clearance to seal the, the rear part so it really sucks air only from inside the chassis but also allowing space to install the top cover. And I designed a duct to make sure that the fan sucks air only from the CPU and not colder air that is around the server chassis. Yeah, I want to direct the airflow so the two intake fans push air through the CPU and this exhaust fan sucks it out. Because I know that if I would have only the Noctua fans and put the chassis in the rack, I could probably have some uh, heat pockets. Which I actually ended up having with this uh, duct design and I had to redesign it to avoid the, this heat pocket on, in one of the sides. Then my next step was to see if I could use the jackets from the all the cables that I cut to wire through the chassis the fan. So you see uh, the, the wire goes behind, I turn it around in a way that it sits around the ports and then you just run the thin wires through the hole in the chassis and protect it with the jacket. After soldering the wires, this is how it looks from behind. It sits very nicely around the, the SD card cover and underneath the serial port once the fan is installed. The fan support was designed to fit when the server is covered, so it's kind of hanging here but I needed to test it, so I installed the air duct I 3D printed together with the, with the um, fan and I did a quick test. Now the first server is done and you see I don't need any more the hard drive supports because I'm using just thin SSDs. This allows free airflow through the Noctuas and on the top there you can see the exhaust duct and the exhaust fan already installed. After closing the chassis, you can see that the fan support holds perfectly fine. I didn't want to have a hole in front of the chassis, but the CD-ROM drive cover relies on the hard drive trails rails to stay in place. So I 3D printed this support that allows it to rest on top of it and still giving all the airflow that it needs. This is how it rests in place. I don't use any tape or any other glue. The rubber pins keep it aligned to the fan intake and when I shut the server, the weight of the drive tray together with the pressure applied by the lid keep it very tight. Before shutting the lid, I can use the pin that serves, helps aligning the, the cover with the chassis body to loop the wire through, as you can see on the right side of this picture. And after applying double-sided tape plus some tape to cover the air intakes, the fan keeps, the fan is very shut and there is no air leaking around, so it's really sucking all the hot air from the CPU and I could see it when I tested it. I let the server run at 100% CPU utilization for a couple of days to make sure that the air duct would not melt or the CPU overheat. 
I decided to limit the CPU clock to 2400 uh, megahertz instead of the original 3 or 3.1, but that's fine for my purposes because I have five servers. On the 2nd of May, I built the next server already using the new air duct design. You can see on the top right the old design with the sharper turn versus the new design with more space for the air to flow. On the next server, I found a way to nicely route the cables, as you can see on the left, in a way that they are either very low on the chassis or touching the top lid, allowing for better airflow. Here's the final iteration of my design. You can see on the left the, the holder, allowing for airflow, but also keeping the, the cover lid of the CD drive in the correct position. You see in the middle the tape covering the, in the, the CPU fans to make sure the air goes in the air duct. On the right side, you can see my air duct doesn't have yet in the picture a tape, but in the final design it is taped. I just made a photo before taping it. The exhaust fan is correctly installed and in place, and you can see that there is plenty of air for the PSU fan, so you get very nice airflow. The expansion card slot also gets very nice airflow. There's a little bit less airflow around the CPU, unfortunately, because the cables are going there, even though they are really flush on the bottom. But, well, you have two fans and the third one for exhaust, so there is no problem. Another change I did in the design is I basically keep the memory out of the airflow. It's okay for now, I'm running everything at a lower clock speed and I've had no problems at all. Even one day I found some software stuck eating 100% of the CPU, the temperatures never went above 50 degrees and everything was super okay. As a final touch, I 3D printed badges with the name of each host and used double-sided tape to glue it to the top of the management lights. After a day racking everything up, this is how it looks. On the top you can see the distance between the rack and the server that used to be just laying directly on the rack. Then you see the first racks, there is a shelf on the top to put modems and routers just underneath the intake fans. You get two servers, a blank space for airflow and support with acoustic foam, and the network cables of the servers that are not connected yet, I just stick them to the server so I know where they belong. Then you see the UPS. I spend all this effort to make everything whisper quiet and this UPS is super, super loud and runs the fan even you are running it in offline mode. It's very unfortunate, but now I'm going to have this UPS for at least three years. Uh, next time, I'll make it quieter. Then you see the APU for C4 router with uh, FreeBSD, the two Cisco SD SG200 switches that I already had, and the old UPS that I had. It's an offline UPS, but it's quiet, and, and you can install it in the rack. It's good for routers and, and switches and this kind of thing. I have to, overall, I have to say I'm very happy with the results, and this should be my setup for the next at least three years. Only three servers are required for operation, so I have two spares that I can quickly put online, the OS installed, so it's all good. Thanks for watching and see you next time.